good morning to you. So the last two stories that we covered yesterday and the day before, the healing of the centurion servant in Capernaum and the raising of the widow's son in Nain, they're the backdrop to this episode. Now Luke has already introduced us to John the Baptizer via his quasi-miraculous birth. Both his parents were elderly and we saw him baptizing Jesus in chapter 3 and we learnt in the same passage that shortly afterwards Herod Antipas locked up John for daring to criticise this king's marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife. This was in barefaced defiance of Jewish law. So at this point, John is still incarcerated in a dungeon at the bottom of the Machaerus fortress. And he gets a surprise visit from John's own disciples, who were probably taking personal risks, by the way. And if we were alone in the windowless dark with only rats for company, waiting to die simply for telling home truths to a despot, I wonder what we'd be thinking. Did I really need to stick my neck out by criticising this man? What have I accomplished? Bear in mind, he's barely 31, 32. He himself is an only child with no siblings. His parents, Elizabeth and Zechariah, are most likely dead. Like Jesus, he has no family of his own, no wife, no children. Now, what would you want to know if you were him facing the end? I think the answer is, you would want to know that if it's been worth it. Was I really the herald, the one the prophets foretold in lieu of Elijah? Has my life been wasted? So he sends them back to Jesus with this question. Jesus, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? And oh, this is not academic interest. Jesus responds, the NIV translates the, the next sentence as at that very time, and the King James has it in that same hour. What it means in idiomatic English is there and then, on the spot. So instead of giving them a verbal answer, Jesus gives them a demonstration. Then, and only then, does he speak. Go and tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. There's an old saying that actions speak louder than words, and these are unquestionable evidences of Jesus' messianic power. Um, the miracles attest to him, both in power and in scope. And John must have allowed himself a little smile when he heard it. Jesus doesn't leave it there. He includes a personal PS to John, an exhortation. Blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. Elsewhere in the Gospel, we read of people taking offence at Jesus and walking away. And not taking offence means keeping faith. So Jesus is telling John to hold on to his confidence, which should remind you of Hebrews 10.35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. And although there is a challenge in that, there is an ultimate kindness in what Jesus tells his cousin. I sometimes ask myself if my life has been wasted. Did I hide or invest the, the bits and pieces that God entrusted to me? I hope not, but I think that no life spent in obedient discipleship following Jesus 
can ever be wasted. So how are you spending yours? Why not have a muse? Grace and peace. <laughs>